Okay then, so now we have our tabs sorted and we can switch between content. What I'd like to do first is a form for adding new polls, which is gonna go right here. So to do that, we're gonna create a brand new component for that form and I'll place it inside the components folder. So let's create a new file and call this create poll form dot svelte. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually import this now in app.svelte and place it down here where we have content for adding a new poll. So let me now just duplicate one of these things and change this and this to create poll form like so. And now down here, we're gonna output this instead of this paragraph tag and we'll just say create poll form like so, save it. Now we're not gonna see anything at the minute because that has no content over here in create poll form. So let's create first of all a script tag and then down here, we'll do a style tag for later on. And then first of all, I'd like to flesh out the HTML of this form. So we'll create a form tag, it doesn't need an action. And then inside the form, we want to first of all do a few different fields. Now we're gonna have a field for the poll question then a field for answer A or answer one, and then a field for answer B or answer two, and then finally a button at the bottom. Now each field I'm gonna place in its own div so we can style it a bit better later on. So I'm gonna say div and then form hyphen field, and then inside this first form field, I'm gonna do a label, and this is gonna be for question, and the label will say poll question. Okay, so now we need an input field below that. So we'll say input. It's gonna be of type text. It's gonna have an ID equal to question. And then we'll copy this form field because we're gonna do two more. But this time, this is gonna be for question A or rather answer A. So answer hyphen A and I'll change the label text to answer A. And then this down here is gonna be answer B. So answer hyphen B. And we need to change the ID here, by the way. Answer A and answer B. And the reason we're adding IDs, by the way, is to link the label and the input because the for generally equals the ID of the input, okay? So now we need to change this to answer B, like so. Okay, so we have this form and we should be able to see that if we go to add new poll, we can do, we'll style this later on to make it look a bit better. But first of all, I wanna do a bit of data binding so that we can track what a user types into each one of these input fields. Now, previously, when we've tracked this data, we've created a separate variable for each input. But now I'm gonna show you a different way and that's just to create one variable called fields, which is equal to an object. And the object will have three different properties, a property for the question, property for answer A, and a property for answer B. So that now we're storing all of the fields inside one value, because all of those values belong together, right? So then, this is gonna have a question property, which is gonna be an empty string to begin with. Then it's gonna have answer A, which is gonna be an empty string to begin with. And then finally, answer B, empty string to begin with. So we have that fields object. Now we just need to bind to these three properties down in the inputs. So first of all, we'll bind the value of this one equal to something. And in fact, I'm just gonna copy and paste that in each input field. So we don't have to type things out again because we're super lazy, or at least I am. And then this is gonna be bound to fields.question because the question property is on the fields object, right? So this one is gonna be fields.answer A, and down here we have fields.answer B. Awesome, so we're binding now the values that a user types into the input to these different properties on the fields object. So now we're storing those inside here. Now we also need a button at the bottom, so let's do that, button, and this will say add poll. Now, when a user clicks on this button, it's going to fire a submit event on the form, so we can listen to that. I'm going to say on submit. I'm also going to attach 
an event modifier, which is prevent default. We saw that before, and that prevents the default action when a submit event occurs. The default action is to refresh the page. We don't want that to happen, which is why we're doing this. And now we're going to set this equal to some kind of submit handler, which is a function we need to create up here. So let's now do that. I'm going to say const submit handler is equal to a function. And inside that function, all we're going to do is console.log the fields object, right? So when we click on this, it's just going to log the fields object and the current values of these three properties to the console. So let me try this out first of all, functionality wise. Add new poll, inspect, and go to the console. Poll question Do you like Marmite? Yep. And nah. And add poll. And we see this fields object now with this question, this answer, and this answer. So we're now tracking those values and storing them in this object. And later, we can add this object to a data array, which we could cycle through over here and output each object, right? But for now, let's just focus on this form. And I think I'd like to style it a little bit better. So to begin with, I'm going to target the form tag itself. This is going to have a width of 400 pixels a margin of zero and auto. So zero top and bottom, auto left and right, that centralizes it and auto applies margin to the left and right of it equally. Now we also want to say text hyphen align is in the center like so. Now I'm gonna grab each form hyphen field. Remember that's these things right here, each one of these. And inside here, I'm gonna give a margin of 18 pixels top and bottom just so each form field is spread out a little bit and then it's going to be auto left and right and then down here we also want the input tags width is going to be 100 percent now that is 100 percent of 400 pixels remember not the entire screen so down here i also want to say the border radius is going to be six pixels that just softens the corners and then after that, we'll style the labels themselves. Now we want to say the margin is going to be 10 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right. And we also want to text align to the left. That's to overwrite this thing right here. We text align to the center so that the poll could be in the center. The Sorry, the button could be in the center, but now we're overriding that for the label. So the label sits on the left. So if I save this, and come over here, add new poll. Now this looks a lot better. So let's just test this out again. Add poll and we can see everything still works. Awesome. So now we've created the poll and later on, we're going to take this and add it to some data in the app component so that we can cycle through that data and output a template for each poll. But for now, what I'd like to do is just create maybe a custom button component that could be reusable so that they look a bit better. So we'll do that in the next video.